wanted to chat to you guys today about about cancer diagnosis and fertility and particularly people that have been diagnosed with cancer and how fertility should fit into maybe your thought process and what i'm really reminded by is i was probably a fourth year medical student and we did a rotation through maxillofacial surgery and there was a person there with a, a cancer of the floor of their mouth and they were describing in great detail how they were going to do a procedure which would end up removing the tongue and the lower jaw of this patient and saving their life and when, when they'd stopped explaining this whole process they asked if we had any questions and I gingerly put up my hand and I asked why would you do this because I felt that removing the the jaw and the tongue of someone to save their life is not really saving their life as they know it right and so it got me to thinking what people are prepared to do to survive and when we look at how oncologists talk about cancers they really talk about survival rates so that's their big measure of success they they talk about what's the percentage chance of survival at one year and what's the percentage chance at five years and how does chemotherapy or radiotherapy affect this and so but they don't measure other things they don't measure what's the quality of the life that they've saved right and things have changed as far as cancer is concerned we pick cancers up earlier and because we pick them up earlier the prognosis is better and I'll, I'll show you something on my screen at the moment which is cancer survival rates this is taken from public health uh, in England and it may be difficult for you to see, but the, certainly the top 11 cancers all have an above 60% survival rate. And the top 19 cancers have a survival rate above 50%. So if you're looking at breast cancer specifically, your survival rate is 86%. And if you're looking at testicular cancer, it's 97% survival rate. So 40, 50 years ago, cancer survival rates were horrible. One, because we picked them up later, and two, because the chemotherapeutic drugs were just poor. And it was like, when you were told you had cancer, it's like being dropped off in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You're swimming frantically, there's no land in sight, and someone comes past with a lifeboat, and they say to you, look, there's not enough space in this lifeboat for you as you are, and we're gonna cut off your legs for you to survive, because then you'll fit in our lifeboat. And you said, yes, that's fine, because it was, survival at any cost in today's time if you're diagnosed with cancer you've got a very good chance of surviving so it's almost like just being behind the waves and you can see the beach you just can't stand and there's a bit of a backwash and you feel anxious and the lifeguard paddles out to you and says look can i help you get back to shore and you say for sure and that's the chemo right and then they say to get on this body board we're gonna to have to cut off your legs. And you say, hang on a sec. I can see the beach from here. Can't I just swim next to you and you can give me a bit of a push? So we're now in a position where you can maybe start asking questions as to what's the cost of your survival, not saying survival at all cost. And so before getting chemotherapy, it's a good idea to perhaps think about preserving fertility. And I can understand if you're in your twenties, perhaps, or if you're single, Maybe the last concern in your mind when you've been diagnosed with the cancer is the thought of having kids because in the back of your mind you're thinking, I might not survive this even. I mean, how can I think of kids? Isn't that sort of crazy? Isn't it maybe selfish? But actually we've seen the chances of your survival are extremely high with some of these cancers. And so if you don't think about this and make provision for this, no one else is going to. And so looking forward to plan B is obviously one big plan B is being diagnosed with cancer. Another big plan B is ending up at an IVF unit because no one comes here by choice. But if you preserve your fertility, it may make the difference between talking to us about having children using your own eggs or your own sperm versus having children using someone else's eggs and someone else's sperm. For instance, in a donor egg or donor sperm sort of situation. So I would encourage you if you've been diagnosed with the cancer or if you know someone that's been diagnosed with the cancer to ask them have you thought about your fertility have you thought about what options there are of preserving your sperm before you start chemo or putting away some eggs before you start chemo 
And we know that not all chemo will kill all the sperm and not all chemo will kill all the eggs, but in some cases it will. And we don't know beforehand exactly how you will respond. So perhaps it's good to err on the side of caution and have no regret. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions, please contact us. Uh, and if you like it, then like it. Uh, thanks. Thank you.